Um, hello, thanks for the nice introduction. Um, now we have a completely different talk. Uh, it's about primitive design, so uh, there are no proofs in there to loosen the thing a bit up. Um, this talk is about a stream cipher called Rasta, uh, which has a low end def and few ends per bit at the same time. So first of all, a bit of motivation. Why do we uh, want to design such a specific construction? Um, over the past years, we have seen several applications in uh, fully morphic encryption, multi-party computation, and even uh, both quantum secure signature schemes that uh, can profit from um, dedicated uh, symmetric primitives, which minimize the number of multiplications in one way or another. Um, clearly, uh, this uh, has then been addressed by designers who designed new primitives. Uh, for instance, uh, FLIP, Crivium, LoMC, or MIMC. Uh, where the first three of those uh, primitives here uh, just focus on um, multiplications in GF2, which are simply AND gates. Uh, from a research perspective, uh, having a new optimization goal is quite interesting um, because this uh, allows or enables new design strategies for symmetric primitives and also requires um, new crypt analysis techniques to get insight into the security of the resulting constructions. So if we just consider the number of ends for uh, one moment, then uh, one can minimize uh, several um, numbers within uh, his ciphers. For instance, uh, a designer can try to uh, minimize the total number of ends used per primitive call. Uh, what's also possible is to minimize the number of ends per encrypted bit, and also the end def, which is the number of uh, cascaded end gates uh, the key has go through. And if we look at existing designs and uh, print on the x-axis the uh, number of ends per bit required, and on the y-axis the end def, we see that uh, existing designs uh, either have a rather high uh, end def and few ends per bits, or they have uh, a high number of ends per bits uh, and a low end def. Okay? And we were asking ourselves the questions, uh, why is this the case? And can we design a primitive uh, which minimizes both at the same time? And uh, hopefully we can, uh, could give a positive answer with Rasta, uh, which, as you can see, uh, minimizes the uh, end def and the number of ends per bits at the same time. So clearly, during the design, we faced some challenges. And the first challenge we had is uh, how to design such a thing. How to design a cipher which minimizes end def and ends per bit at the same time, because to the best of uh, our knowledge, uh, such a construction has not existed before. Um, so it's uh, likely that we uh, might deviate from the classical design strategies. And especially in this case, the low end depth seems uh, challenging to us. And uh, then if we came up with a construction with a design, uh, then we face the problem how to analyze the outcome and how to argue about its security. Um, but first of all, in classical designs, where do we have a high end def at all? Uh, so let us consider some symmetric cryptographic primitive, for instance, a block cipher, uh, which takes some input and processes the input under a secret key and produces output. Um, for classical application, uh, such a block cipher or symmetric primitives uh, look like this. It's a static um, a set of functions uh, where only the inputs uh, change. Uh, such a construction has the benefit that it can be efficiently implemented in hard and in software. But uh, also due to this uh, fact that this is a static uh, system of equations, uh, we rather need a high end depth and a high degree because otherwise um, uh, having a uh, low degree would mean that we do not have protection against uh, certain classes of attacks, like higher order differential attacks and Q-black attacks. 
Um, for instance, let us consider an attacker who has control over the input, and we have some symmetric primitives which has a low degree output function. Then an attacker uh, could do the following. Uh, he could uh, just uh, uh, set some uh, input bits to a constant value while iterating uh, over the all possible values of some bits. Uh, and then, as you can see here, if he sums up the output bit, uh, he gets a linear equation in the key bits, which is quite bad. So uh, how did we overcome this fact? Um, our idea was uh, that the problem lies in the fact that a uh, low degree function is uh, evaluated several times. But what if, if it's just evaluated for one time? Uh, so we end up with uh, a raster, as you can see here. And the idea is to um, take or define a family of different low degree permutations. Uh, which are just evaluated once by the key and uh, feed forward, uh, and to produce in this uh, way the key stream which is used to uh, encrypt the plain text. Um, the choice of the permutation here by solely relies on public parameters, which is uh, the public nonce, which has to be sent uh, together with the ciphertext and also block counter for the different number of blocks. Um, so clearly, uh, one way to do this would be to uh, create and design many different permutations, billions of uh, permutations, but this is a time-consuming task. Uh, so how did we design the permutation of the cipher so that the equation system changes every time? And actually what we are doing is we rely on the classical layered structure we see in symmetric primitives, uh, which consists of the uh, alternating um, applications of linear affine layers and non-linear layers. But in contrast to uh, classical designs uh, for Rasta, uh, the affine layers are nonce dependent. So they change for every uh, different uh, block and every different nonce. Uh, to be particular, what we do in Rasta, we uh, see an extendable output function with the public uh, nonce and the block counter. And out of this uh, stream, which comes out of the extendable output function, uh, we create uh, invertible matrices and round constants to get our affine layers. Uh, in contrast to the always changing affine layers, um, the nonlinear functions are static. Uh, those are simply the uh, chi function over the whole block width. Okay? And this is also the reason why um, Rasta is only defined for an odd number of uh, uh, block sizes, uh, because only for an odd number, this chi layer here is invertible. Um, so the high level idea to make um, relevant computations of the cipher independent of the key um, was first used in FLIP. But here, um, it was used to permute the uh, input key to a static set of function. And we have taken this approach further in making more parts of the cipher essentially um, changing. And what's also important is since the extensible output function do not use any key material, uh, it does not influence the relevant end metric. So, okay. So what's the idea behind this design? Um, as mentioned before, the idea is that we have changing affine layers to get a changing system of equations to provide protection against a differential and impossible differential attack, cube and higher order differential attacks, and also integral attacks. However, uh, some attack factors remain, um, especially um, attacks which uh, uh, exploit potential good existing linear approximations, or uh, even attacks targeting directly the polynomial system of equations we get. And for this reason, uh, we also might to uh, use a block size and the key size for uh, Rasta, which is uh, bigger than the security level. So what, with what we end up now is a kind of parameterizable problem regarding the block size and the number of rounds. The question we face is now uh, how to choose the block size and the number of rounds. And actually, we have two answers uh, to this problem. Uh, the first one is a parameter set 
uh, which we call Rasta as the design strategy, uh, which is based on uh, bounds and arguments. Uh, and this is our conservative approach, as we'll see later why we call it conservative approach. And the second uh, approach is ACRASTA, uh, which is our aggressive parameter set, uh, which is solely, uh, view, or which is the aggressive parameter set for the RASTA design strategy, uh, where we only base our parameters on the best known attacks, uh, and it's kind of a challenge to crypto, uh, crypto analysis. Um, so how do we get to the parameters for Rasta? Um, first of all, uh, we do not want to have in Rasta uh, good linear approximations. So we have to bound the probability that good uh, approximations exist. And we can do this in the following way. We can uh, s uh, kind of uh, partition Rasta into these sandwiches of uh, matrices and nonlinear layer. And then we know that uh, a good linear characteristic uh, has few uh, active bits uh, on the input and the output of the matrix. And the probability um, that such a good uh, linear characteristic over one round uh, exists uh, solely depends on the matrix. And it gets more improbable the larger the matrix gets. Uh, and uh, so we can do this uh, for every uh, to round sandwich, and for the sake of simplicity, uh, we just assume that the middle matrix can connect the uh, linear characteristics you get here and here, or the best linear characteristics. So if I put this into a figure, um, you can see uh, that with increasing block size, uh, staying at a certain number of rounds, the existence of exploitable linear approximations gets uh, more and more improbable. So you can do two things to um, protect the, uh, the cipher against uh, the existence of good linear approximations is to either increase the block size uh, with a fixed number of rounds or to increase the number of rounds. Um, so another uh, attack vector is an attack which targets directly the uh, polynomial equation systems you get. Um, so this is not uh, a problem only Rasta has. So in principle, it's, uh, it's a general problem for, uh, for each cipher um, how to argue against such attacks which di uh, directly um, target the polynomial system of equations and why this cannot be solved. In Rasta, we have the speciality that we kind of hardly limit the degree because we want to get the low end depth, uh, which also um, limits the possible number of different monomials we have in our polynomial equation system. And if this number gets too low, uh, this might allow trivial linearization where you just replace the monomials with new secrets and then solve the resulting linear system of equations. And for this reason, we might want to increase uh, the number of secrets and also the block size uh, to get more monomials. Also, if we put this into a figure, uh, we see that the number of monomials uh, for a certain uh, fixed number of rounds uh, increases um, uh, with an increasing key and the block size. And what's also shown here is uh, how the number of monomials behave if you guess a certain amount of key bits at the inputs. Uh, and for Asta, we have decided that uh, we want to have that the number of monomials uh, matches to the power of the security lever under uh, guessing the, uh, the key bit. And to protect further against such attacks, we also um, apply a limit on the data complexity, which limits you in collecting um, enough equations to solve the system. So we end up with this uh, number for the instances of Rasta. Uh, in this triangle here, those numbers come from uh, the linear approximations, so from the bounds we get on the uh, linear approximations. And uh, this triangle here um, comes from the fact that we do not want to have uh, 
a low number of maximum possible uh, monomials. And uh, we do not define raster for two and three rounds since our analysis relies on good diffusion properties which are not guaranteed for such a low number of rounds. Um, and now we come to cryptanalysis or how we get to the parameter set for ACK raster. Um, besides computing such bounds, we also tried to break the cipher. So for instance, we tried to use a SAT server uh, and the result was that exhaustive search performs better for more than one round of raster. Uh, we also did various experiments with toy versions, uh, for instance, counting the number of uh, possible monomials you get at the output, and we do not have observed any of these outliers here. And we also tried various dedicated attacks, for instance, on SAS, uh, of various versions of SAS, where you just have a nonlinear layer and a fine layer and a nonlinear layer, and also on variants of two rounds and three rounds of raster, where the security level uh, is approximately um, the block size. And so how does such a, a Attack on three round raster where the block size is approximately the security level looks like, I will show you next. Um, in principle, what we do here is a guess and determine attack, but in contrast to normal guess and determine attacks, we try to uh, get in from both sides and uh, guess bits you do not know and verify the guess in the middle. Uh, we just come from the front side since we used the Chi layer and the inverse of the Chi layer is quite uh, hard to deal with. Uh, deal with. Um, so what we do in this attack is uh, we exploit the fact that uh, knowing this matrix here, we can uh, express the input bits of the first S layer as affine functions in the key bits. And if we guess every second bit of the S layer, this gives us an equation in the key bits with a solution, but also uh, this allows us to express um, the output of the S layer as linear functions or fine functions uh, in the key bits. And since we can express the output bits, we can also express the input bits here uh, for the next S layer. And here we cannot uh, guess every second bit anymore, so we have to guess less. And as a consequence, we only um, can only express a limited amount of bits at the output of the second S layer as uh, affine functions in the key bits. And so uh, we actually can, o can only attack uh, permutations, which in this case have a weak affine layer here, uh, which means uh, we have to search for a block which contains such a weak affine layer that allows us to map uh, several consecutive uh, bits as function of just these bits and not the bits above here. And then what we can do next is uh, guess every second bit of this range here. And then we uh, get a linear function of these bits in the key bits, uh, which we can uh, connect to the key again if we uh, know the key stream here. So um, as I've mentioned, we consider raster to be very conservative. Uh, the main reason is that I've colored here uh, the parameter sets that we can actually attack um, for Rasta. And here are the chosen parameters of Rasta. And as you can see in this figure, um, there's quite some uh, distance to the attackable area. And uh, for this reason, we have also defined ACK Rasta which is just um, based on the best attacks we have, uh, plus one round. So uh, this is Akrasta here, and this should uh, serve as a kind of challenge for future crypt analysis, uh, analysis basically, uh, to see if they can break in more rounds than we can. And what we, how do we define Akrasta? Uh, basically, we just uh, take the minimum uh, block size plus one bit to get uh, an odd block size and add one more round as mentioned before. Um, so we have four and four rounds for 80 and 128 bit and five rounds for 256 bits. So let's come to a conclusion. Uh, what have we have seen here, 
Um, we have seen a new design strategy, uh, which is called Rasta, and two parameter sets of it. Uh, one is conservative and based on bounds and security arguments, and also one which is more aggressive and it's solely based on the best attacks we can do. Um, in the paper, you can find uh, benchmarks we did in Helip, uh, which shows that even the conservative versions of Rastas are competitive with existing designs. And as I've shown in the last uh, figure, there's actually a huge gap between the known attacks or the best attacks that we can do and the bounds that we get. So thank you. <laughs>